Okay, this is gonna be an opening lesson on the data cycle. We'll be talking about the data cycle all year in algebra, whether that's algebra one or algebra two, okay? All right, I want you to look at these graphs up here. All these graphs represent real life data, where math actually appears in real life, okay? So the first one says, uh, uh, hours spent studying and score on the final exam, okay? I want you to look at that and, and think about uh, what do you think that that means when you have those uh, dots like that and then that line, okay? All right, and uh, I want you to pause and maybe write down a few thoughts, okay? All right, now what that basically means is the more hours spent, the score on your final exam goes up, okay? So this right here, this is your X value. This is your independent variable. And this one, this Y right here, that's your dependent variable. And what does that mean? It, the final exam is dependent on how much you study, okay? And that's sort of how that works, okay? All right, let's look at this one, okay? This is a quadratic, okay? And this, I would like you to write down what you see here. Okay. So this right here is in speed, is in miles per hour. This is in gas consumption. So, so what happens, all right? The, the faster you go, okay, the more gas is uh, needed to expend, and then eventually um, your car will be running at a certain level and it won't need to expend as much gas consumption for that, okay? Once again, X and Y. This is an, what I call an exponential graph. I'd like you to write down what you see there, okay? As the years go by, the population grows, okay? All right, and that's what that means, okay? Once again, X and Y, years and population, okay? Now, these all can be represented by equations, okay? y equals ax plus b, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, y equals a times b to the x. Now, in these, this first unit, we don't need you to memorize those. We're going to give you those, okay? But each of these represents a different equation. As you can see, they're set up differently, okay? All right? How would you choose which one to use? So basically, what you're given here is a set of data, okay? and a certain curve, all right? Now, you can make the argument that, Mr. Evans, if I can see where the dots are going, okay? So, so two ways you can, you can look at that. If I see where the dots are going, okay? I can make an equation through those dots, okay? And you would be right, okay? Sometimes, depending on your calculator, Okay, depending on um, whether you're given, given a picture, okay, you may not know. Now, in the calculator, you can actually calculate um, uh, using uh, what we we'll call a regression, can actually calculate and find what, which one to use. And we're gonna look at it in a second. But the one that has an R squared value, it's called a correlation, closest to one, is the correct formula to use, okay? All right? Um, so we're gonna talk about, and we're gonna give you these, we're gonna work in Desmos. In Algebra 2, later on in the year, we're gonna get into uh, using the, the, the graph, um, your calculator for this, but for everybody, we're gonna start by using Desmos, okay? All right, I'm just gonna pause this real quick so I can get up Desmos, all right? But basically, if you take a look at these, these are the, the, the equations that you would want to use. Okay, all right. Now, very simply, what we're going to do is we're gonna put some value, some data into Desmos. 
we're going to put these equations and we're going to see which one has an r squared closer to zero, okay? All right? Now, once again, you'll be given these. I'll be passing these out on your, on your sheet, okay? But if you're at home doing this, you can take a little picture of th this little part right here just so you have it available, okay? All right? So here's a real-life example. A waiter makes a flat rate for the day plus an hourly wage. Below is a table to show the paycheck for the waiter. What type of equation to use? Okay, so here's what you're going to do. You're going to hit this plus sign right here in Desmos, and you're going to make a table. And you're going to type these values in. 4, 7, 15, 25, 40, 60, 75, okay? And then... Um, if I can move this over to the other side without any issues. Okay. Um, okay. So what I would do over here, just so I can see this a lot faster, 122. Okay. 176. Okay. All right. Uh, 320. Okay. 500. 770. 11. All right, and so then what I want to do is I want to put in, all right, the formulas. So I type what for lines, y1, okay? Now to get the little curvy thing, I hit um, the ABC button. And I go to this, looks like a little tilde. A, X, 1, plus, you go to my letters B. Now somebody say, what are those, why do I have to put a 1 there? Well, if you look at your table, you see there's a one here and a one here, you have to put those in that spot. This right here means approximately. Now, I wanna draw your attention to this thing that says R squared. The one closest to the actual one will give you the correlation. That ends up being your answer, okay? So this is a line, okay? So that's all I'm gonna write for right now. It's gonna be a line. Later on, we're gonna go back and calculate the equation. Now, so we said, well, Mr. Evans, what if I put something else. Okay, let's say I use the exponential one, which the exponential one is A um, times B, and then exponent is right here, exponent X1. Now, I want to show you the R squared, as you see, is not close to one. It's close, but not closer than one, and that's how you know, okay? So you just have to put the equations in because it's sort of hard to see the dots, okay? All right, as you can see, it doesn't curve through, all right? Now, if I do the other one, the one I originally had, the AX1 plus B, as you can see, that line goes through those dots, okay? And that's another way you can look at it uh, graphically to see, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go through a couple of different examples, okay? And we're going to see how that looks. It says a table below represents the height of a ball hit by a Washington National. Okay, all right. So let me see if I can shrink this up a little bit so that I don't have to keep uh, turning this back and forth. So once again, I'm going to clear this table out. We get plus table, okay, and 0.5, okay, and then 20, 1, and 30, 1.5, and 2, 2.5, and 36, 3. 30, 3.5, and 20, okay? Now, as you can see over here, I don't have, I'm very far zoomed out, so I can't really see if I, sometimes hit the home button. Okay? All right, you can sort of see the points now, okay? All right, you can sort of see the points, all right? Now, 
Well, let's say I put that line equation, y1 approximately ax1 plus b. Okay? And as you can see here, the r squared is nowhere near 1, and it doesn't go through the dots. Okay? So what I'm going to do is go ax1 squared plus bx1 plus c. The equation for a quadratic. Okay? All right? Oh, whoops, I got the wrong number in there. Hold on, that should be a, um, I skipped some in here, didn't I? Whoops, I skipped some. Hold on, let me go back. Two, uh, two should have 38 next to it. I was wondering why that wasn't working. 1.5 should have 36 next to it. That's where I made my mistake. 36, two is gonna have 38. Uh, 2.5 is going to have uh, 36. Twenty. One is thir uh, that. Two is that. There we go. And now I got my r squared value as being one. Okay. As you can see, it goes through all the dots. So I didn't put that in there. So obviously, this is a quadratic. the last one we're going to do. Okay, your grandparents give you, nice grandparents, give you $1,500 on the day you were born. Your parents invest that money for you. you. The amount of money in your account is listed below. Okay, all right, so I'm going to do my best here. I'm going to clear this out. Okay, I'm going to make my table. Hopefully I don't mess it up this time. This X value is years. So three, five, Seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. Okay, all right. Sixteen oh five. Eighteen thirty seven point fifty. Twenty one oh three point eight zero. Twenty four oh eight point sixty, twenty five, twenty seven fifty seven sixty, thirty one fifty seven twenty, and the last one thirty six fourteen point seven. Okay, and hopefully that's right. All right, now, if I try the line one, y1, curvy thing, a, x, one, plus b, okay, the r squared's not bad, 0.9866, not bad, okay? Now, let's check the quadratic, see if that one's any better. ax squared plus bx one now. Okay, that's pretty good, 0.99999, okay? Now, let's try the exponential one, which the exponential one, you type A times B, make the exponent X1. Now, this one gives me an R squared value of exactly one, okay? So, 
That's the one I want to use. So this is an exponential. Okay? All right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass out um, uh, a couple for you to try. All we want to do is come up with what kind of function is it? Is it a line? Is it a quadratic? Or is it an exponential? 